today we are going to be learning about Boyle's Law. And Boyle's Law is um, the most basic of the gas laws as far as I'm concerned. It's applicable in a lot of chemistry, so it's very important to learn. Um, and first, the first thing to learn about gas laws is Boyle's Law. Second to that would be Charles Law. And then thirdly would probably be Gay-Lussac's Law, and we'll learn about all those in the following videos. Um, but to start Boyle's Law, I mean, it's really simple. Boyle's Law is simply the inverse relationship of pressure and volume. All that means is that every time pressure goes up, volume goes down. So, um, I mean, if you have, you know, say a liter of gas and uh, you squeeze it, you know, you squeeze it down, you can compress that gas down. The more pressure you add to it, the more that the gas is going to compress and the volume is going to decrease. Um, vice versa as well. If you have a certain amount of gas inside of a container and you somehow decompress that container, you open it up, the pressure is going to decrease and the volume is going to increase. And that equation can be broken down really simply. Uh, all that equation is is P1 times V1 is equal to P2 times V2. Um, so this is the equation that you're going to be using in any Boyle's Law problem that you're given. Um, as long as it only is a matter of pressure and volume and not temperature or moles or anything like that, this is the only equation you're going to use. So we have an example problem down here. And the best thing to do for these equations is just to label everything you're starting with. So what I like to do is I put P1 and I put V1. And then over here I'll draw P2 and V2. And um, from here I'll just read through the problem and I'll kind of mark everything as I go. So a gas at 1.25 atmospheres occupies a space of 20 liters. So right off the bat we know that our pressure, our starting pressure is going to be 1.25 atmospheres. And our starting volume is going to be 20 liters. So I just write that down into um, my little table here. The gas is then compressed, so it's shrinking to 16 liters. So our final volume is going to be 16 liters. What is the resulting, oh I wrote that wrong. What is the resulting pressure? Pressure is what we're looking for here guys. What is the resulting pressure? So, to do this, all we have to do is we just plug these into our equation. So we go P1 times V1 is equal to P2 times V2, and our P1 is 1.25 atmospheres, and our volume is 20 liters, and that is equal to P2, we don't know that yet, times 16 liters. Let me do the math here. 1.25 times 20 and we're going to divide that 16 out on the one side to isolate P2. So we got 25 divided by 16 and our final pressure P2 is equal to 1.5625 and remember when we're doing chemistry we're going to want to account for significant figures and in this problem we're only going to have one significant figure because the 20, uh, the 0 does not have a decimal point after it. So we're only going to one significant figure. So actually in this problem, which I don't like this, is going to 2. But um, if that was anything else, if that was 21, this is a whole separate issue. If that was 21 instead of 20, it would go to 1.6. Um, for now, you know what, don't worry about significant figures. If that's confusing you, you don't really need to know it. All you need to know is that this is your answer here. All right, guys, that's the end of that video. Um, I'm going to be doing Charles Law and Gay-Lussac's Law. And from there, I'm actually going to go into the combined gas law. Um, I plan on doing a whole chemistry, calculus, trigonometry cu curriculum on here. So if you want to subscribe to me, you'll have all that available to you. Alright guys, um, check out my next video. I'll see ya.